Hey there, everybody. My name is Rick Utsa here with Airgun Web, your home for old school airgun reviews, and where we tell you the facts, not fluff. Today's video, as you can see, is another Seneca Big Boar. We looked at the Seneca 50 Cal recently, the Dragon Claw, and I'd asked you guys, would you like to see more? And you guys said yes, so that's what we're doing. This is the Seneca 909. This is the Light Hunter in 45 caliber. Let's get into it. So before we get started, definitely want to say thank you to Pyramid Air for sponsoring Ergon Web in these videos. They've been a supporter of Ergon Web really from the very beginning, and if it wasn't for them, there's no way I'd still be doing this today. So when you're looking for your next air gun, your next air gun accessory, supplies, all of that stuff that you need to enjoy the sport, please go to www.pyramidair.com and also let them know that Rick sent you their way. So let's get into the Seneca 909 Light Hunter. Now, this is pretty much the same as the Dragon Claw. It has a 500cc cylinder, rifled barrel, single shot with a little breech here. It's got a uh, side cocker here. It's got a two position hammer. So single cock is low power, two cocks is high power. You can, of course, decock it and it has a push safety under here. If the safety's on, you can't cock the gun. It is predominantly going to be for right-handed shooters. As you see, the stock is really set up uh, for a righty, and you cannot shift the cocker around. So it is really more a right-handed rifle. Now, why would somebody want to go 45 over 50? And that's a pretty good question. Uh, the 45 gives me a little bit better ballistics. I think it gives me a little bit better penetration. That's just my personal opinion. And I think, and this is more fact really, there are so many more options in ammo in the 4.5 range than there are in the 50. So in 50 cal, you maybe have a couple choices. In the 45 caliber range, you have a lot of choices. And for me, that kind of gives me options, whether it's round ball I want to shoot or uh, heavy slugs I want to shoot. I can find something that's going to work in my rifle. Uh, moreover, if you're into the self-sufficiency side of things, boy, finding gear to remake your own bullets in 45 is very, very simple. You do want to go 457. This is going to be more more accurate with 457 than 454. I learned today 454 really doesn't run well in this. I even had some round ball that, which I thought was going to run great, but it's 454 round ball and it didn't shoot very well at all. It was very inconsistent. But when I went to the 457 ammo and it was also heavier, it was very consistent. So let's talk a bit about that consistency and power here for a moment. Um, this is essentially a 220 to 230 foot pound gun. So depending on your ammo and really when you hit 250 grain, and I topped out today at 350 is all I had. Um, it's all about the same. It, your velocity is going to adjust, but the power output is 215 to 230, 220, 230. It's in that range with that grain weight of ammo. Now, personally, I like around a 300 grain slug uh, for this. Same thing with the 50 cal. The 336s went really, you know, flew really well. Today, the best bullet was a 295 grain hollow point, which really shot very well. The other bullet shot okay, but they didn't really give me the groups I wanted. But this 295 um, really did great. We'll get to that in a moment. Some of the other specs you're going to want to know is like trigger pull and noise. And so let's talk about trigger pull right now. You're looking at about a three pound trigger. So um, it's if there was something there that may have also contributed to some of my challenges today on the accuracy portion. Uh, I struggled with the trigger. Um, it wasn't consistent to me in its break, and so and there was seemed to be a little bit of a hitch in it. So that was took me some getting used to. Noise, this thing is loud. I mean, this is not at all backyard friendly. Here at the muzzle, right, right at the bench, it's almost 120 dB. It's 119 and some change. Now, I did measure out at 40 yards, which is where we were shooting today, and it was like 90 and some change. That was 98, I think, or 96. I have it right here. Um, 98.2. This is a very loud air gun, so don't think you're going to be shooting this in your backyard. And really, I probably should have been wearing ear protection today. I, I came out here, 
um, thinking I was just going to put up some targets and boom, we're going to be on it. Because normally I, I really know this gun. I've shot this gun a lot, this particular model. Um, but I, I found that the ammo I normally had, which was 457, I didn't have as much as I thought. So I wound up trying some 454, but it didn't really work. And on the accuracy side of things, which is what we could talk about now, really you're going to want to make sure you're running 457. Now, I tried, like I said earlier, I tried different ammos from uh, round ball to 200 grain, 250 grain. I tried some 166, 167. All of that stuff was 454 and it just didn't run well at all. When I switched to the 457, then things started to get better. And um, the heavier, heavier stuff, like the 310s and the 350s, um, for whatever reason, maybe it was me with the trigger, I just couldn't seem to get that to come together. But I found my 295s and not only were they very consistent just shot count or shot wise, uh, but they really grouped well. I mean, when I look at this target here, I mean, that's that's five shots. Um, and that's most certainly under an inch center to center, guys. That is very, very good. Um, it's 40 yards, um, but I think you could probably pull that to 50 if you needed to. And if you really wanted to shoot beyond that, my, my concern would be is that the velocity of the round is gonna be such that if you're hunting with it, the animal's gonna jump the shot. So reality, as close as you can get in to your game, the better off you're gonna be and the better chance you're gonna have to be to have success when hunting. So really, who would want this gun if you have all these other options out there? Well, because it can run both low power and high power, this thing to me, just it, it's just very practical. So um, if I were gonna go hunt medium large game, and well, let me say this, if you came to me and said, Rick, I have 500 pound hogs in my field, I need to kill them, I, I would not recommend this air gun. Um, I would recommend something else. What that would be, I'm not quite sure, but it wouldn't be this. If you said, hey, Rick, I got a squirrel problem, uh, this is not gonna be the gun, right? But if you said, you know, I've got a mix on my farm, I've got bobcat and coyote, and maybe I've got some raccoon, and yeah, you know, I want a deer hunt too. Well, now you're talking about something that's really perfect for the 909, because you can run round ball, 457 round ball on low power and get that accuracy and velocity for coyote and smaller game, raccoon and stuff. Gosh, it would be devastating, a raccoon, armadillo, that kind of thing. But if you needed more power and you wanted to take hogs, 150 pound or 200 pound hogs, or you have deer that you want to harvest, you can do that as well. So it's very versatile that way. And also, again, if you're one of those guys that wants to be self-sufficient, you know, being able to cast your own stuff, to me, I did that when I was in Havasu. I really enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun. Um, so you have that option. There's lots of different choices you have in the 457 caliber that I, I just don't think you have as many in other things. So for me, I really like the 45. That's why uh, from a just a pure kind of basic hunting rifle, I really like it. I, I wish the trigger was a little bit better. I mean, just full stop, I wish that was a little bit better. But the more I shot it today, the more I sort of got used to it and kind of settled into more of, I knew what it was going to do and could really adjust for it. It became less of an issue later in the day than in, in the start of the day. Um, but that's about it. This is the 45 cal Seneca 909 Light Hunter. As far as a solid, I mean, a solid hunting rifle, this thing really has it going on. If you guys like it, you want to know more about it, check it out, www.pyramidair.com. All the links will be in the description below. And if you want more of these kinds of videos, so maybe you guys want to see some of the different ammo options that are out there and how they shoot good, bad, and the ugly, I don't really do those kinds of videos, but I'm open to doing it. You guys let me know. If you'd like to see the good, bad, and the ugly on all the different types of 45 cal ammo we have, uh, maybe that would be a, a video you guys would find interesting. I'd, I'd be interested to do it for you if that's something you'd like. But let me know in the comments and we'll we'll get it scheduled. Guys, that's going to be it for now. My name is Rick Utzer here with Airgun Web, your home for old school airgun reviews, and where we tell you the facts, not fluff. Thanks for watching.